So our next question, find all the square roots of this complex number. So I chose this one because it's not gonna have a nice angle. We're not gonna be able to just guess this angle. So what do we do? I like to graph these. I think that's a really good place to start. So this one is negative one, go one to the left, and then go down four. And there's our number. And we're gonna get the radius, and then we're gonna get the angle right here. So I can already tell the angle is gonna be bigger than uh, pi over two. That means when we do the tangent inverse, what we're actually gonna get is we're gonna get this angle right here, and we're gonna to have to add a pi to it to get the extra half rotation. All right, let's do the easy part first. The radius is gonna be, and again, we got a plus bi, so our a is negative one plus b is negative four times i, r square root a squared plus b squared, and that's gonna be square root so I'm gonna be lazy here and just write one squared. Why am I writing positive one squared? Well, what happens when you square a negative? You get a positive. All right, I'm gonna make a really bad mistake here. And hopefully you'll see why this is gonna be a bad mistake. One squared is one plus negative four squared is 16. I squared is negative one. We got a big problem. I should not have put I into this. If you put I in, what will most likely happen is you're gonna get negative after you square. That's really bad. So you're supposed to grab the number B, not the I right next to it. So do not take that. You just want that negative four. And of course, what's negative four squared? Same thing as positive four squared. So one plus 16 is 17. All right, so that's our radius. Now we're gonna go for the angle theta. It's tangent inverse y over x, or in these variables, b over a. You can look above, and it came from right here. Your tangent's y over x, and then that led us to solve for theta with tangent inverse. So that's where that comes from, it's just y over x is tangent. All right, we got b and we got a. b is negative four, a is negative one. And those cancel out to just tan inverse four. This is not an angle I know about. So it's not gonna turn into something nice, a nice multiple of pi. I do have to add, however, a half rotation because our x coordinate was negative. That means we're on the left side of the unit circle. So we'll go do that in red here. I'm gonna add a pi. If you have a calculator, you can turn this into a decimal number. It's totally reasonable. I'm not gonna pull a calculator out, so I'm not worried about that right now. So let's write the Euler form. So our radius was square root 17 e to the i. Now our angle's ugly. Tangent inverse four plus pi. So I'm gonna keep it in parentheses to keep that thing together. This is z, our original number. Now we're gonna take z to the one half power. So we're gonna apply the half power. I'm gonna rewrite square root 17 as 17 to the half power. Take the whole thing to the half power. So this power goes, distributes into there, and then we're gonna multiply it into our angle. So 17 to the half to the half, e to the i. So we gotta look out because we're taking a, a fractional power or a root. 
And the formula we're using is somewhere over here. Here it is. Let's go ahead and grab that and drop it here. Make it a little smaller. All right, so that's what we're using here. And I think it's going to interfere where I want to write. Put it up there. All right. So we got this crazy, this is all theta right here. It's super ugly, but that's theta. So we got i to the tangent inverse of 4 plus pi times 1 over n. For us, that's 1 over 2 plus 2 pi k over 2 for k equals 0 and 1. So there's going to be two solutions here. We have two answers right here, k equals 0 and the k equals 1 answer. We're going to write them down carefully. Uh, we could distribute this half in right now, uh, but I'll just do it right as we uh, go ahead and get our answers here. So we'll start with the k equals 0. That one's easier to plug in because this entire term disappears because k is 0. So we got 17. Our power is going to be a half times a half. You multiply powers to power, so that's one fourth e to the i times tangent inverse four plus pi. Now I do need to apply this one half. Uh, you could go over two like this, but I worry that 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 two looks a little too close to uh, being on the the level of everything else I wrote. So what I'm gonna do instead is just write the times one half up here. And then we're going to do the k equals 1 right now. So we got that same 17 to the fourth. That's the radius or the magnitude. e to the i times. Now we do have k is 1 now. So I'm going to carefully write this tan inverse 4 plus pi, that's times a half. Now when k is one, you get two pi over two, which is just plus pi. You do need a extra parentheses because this i has to be multiplied by everything up here. And let's reduce this a little bit. So what's happening in here, we get a pi over two when we multiply, plus another two pi over two. Maybe I should have left it as two pi over two. And of course, that half is distributed to both of these pieces. So we got, let's write that one half out front. So we got pi over 2 plus 2 pi over 2 is 3 pi over 2. So that's our second answer. And again, if you're going to convert these into uh, A plus IB form, or Cartesian form, the way you're gonna that I recommend doing it is use the cosine i sine instead of the Euler e to the i theta form. So it's gonna be cosine of this angle up top plus i sine of that same angle. And now uh, these angles are not going to be nice. So you really, if you want to get a decimal answer in A plus IB form, you're really going to need to use a calculator here. You could use the angle sum, and then you can carefully try to unwind that, but you're going to have to also use a half angle formula. So that's a few steps away from being reasonable uh, to do right here. That would take quite a while, and it still would come out with a pretty crazy answer. Um, but it's definitely possible to do that.